What are we, Dane? Andrelai. There we go. <sighs> nuclear reactors, nuclear power. We have nuclear reactors here in Canada. We have nuclear reactors in the U.S. In fact, most countries have a nuclear reactor or two or three. It is a way of generating power. So what we're going to talk about is just how that works. And the first type of nuclear reaction that we can do is what's called nuclear fission. Unfortunately, there are two main types of nuclear reactions that we do. There's fission and fusion, and they all sound very, very similar, and it's easy to get them mixed up. I'm going to try and give you dumb ways to keep them straight. If you keep them straight, then they make a lot of sense. So nuclear fission is the splitting of a large nucleus into two smaller ones. When they talk about splitting the atom, this is what they're talking about. This is what we figured out how to do in the 1940s. This is what they figured out how to do in top secret at the Manhattan Project in the U.S. This is what Einstein wrote about. This is uh, nuclear reactions. This we can do pretty well. This, the physics and the math, is not all that tough. So it's splitting a large nucleus into two smaller ones. And then you also have some subatomic particles, protons or neutrons or electrons or some of the weird ones that we don't talk about here in Science 10. Oh, and here's the key. You get a third product, energy. Amazingly, barely any in one small reaction. If you split one atom, Ty, you get almost no energy, a tiny, 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 tiny bit of energy. Oh, but if you split several trillion of them, it adds up. It adds up. Used to generate electricity in a nuclear reactor. Well, it's more complicated than that. Jessica, what we really do is in a nuclear reaction, when we use nuclear fission, the energy is given off mostly as heat. We use the heat to heat up water and turn it to steam. We use the steam to turn a turbine, which then turns a generator, which that's where we get electricity. But you know what? We, we can use it to generate electricity. So in nuclear reactions, new atoms are produced. And it's going to be the same rules as looking at nuclear decay. When we write our equations, the top numbers all have to balance. Those were the mass numbers. And the bottom numbers have to balance. Those were the proton or atom the charge numbers. So the sums of the charges, it's the bottom numbers, and masses. That was the top numbers in our little equations. Have to stay constant. <laughs> we said that when you split an atom, you split a large nucleus, an unstable nucleus, into two smaller ones, and you also get some subatomic particles. So here is some of the subatomic particles that you get. You can get a proton. Curtis, writing the word proton is way too much work. What would be a good abbreviation or letter to use for the word proton? Here's how we're going to write it as a symbol. A lowercase p. What's the mass of a proton in atomic mass units? It has a nice mass. In fact, it's how we defined the atomic mass. You know what the mass of a proton is? We'll put a 1 right there. Oh, and what's the charge on one proton, conveniently? One. If you write a P with a one and a one, I know you're talking about a proton. Every once in a while, if we're really being fussy, Hayden, we may refer to it as something else. A proton is 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 also A hydrogen nucleus. Because if you look at your periodic table, 
What's the mass of hydrogen? One. What's the charge on hydrogen? One. Oh, but hydrogen normally also has an electron. But if we use some kind of nuclear or chemical reaction, we rip that electron away, we have a proton. So it's also a hydrogen nucleus. You may, every once in a while then, Brendan, see it written as this, H11. I like the proton not notation myself. It's a proton. But every once in a while, you'll see it written instead of proton, Hayden, H, not for Hayden, but for hydrogen. Mass of one, charge of one. Uh, the second thing you can get is a neutron. In fact, these are really, 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 really important. We'll talk about why in a bit. You'll see why in a video. Um, what would be a good abbreviation to use for the word neutron? Lowercase n. What's the charge on a neutron? Why is it called a neutron? What's the charge? Zero. We'll put a zero down there. Now, do you remember we did learn the other day, what's a neutron made up of? It's made up of a proton and an electron and an anti-neutrino, but Amber, you don't need to know that. But the nerd within me just can't let it go. Anyways, you know what its mass is then? It's the mass of one proton plus one electron. But how much does an electron weigh? Nearly what? No. It's nearly zero. So you know what the mass of a neutron is? It's, it's one. OK, it's technically not. It's like one point. Uh, let me do the math, one point, and then 16 zeros, and then some decimal. It's one. Uh, we don't write that any other way, thankfully. What else can you get? You can also get a helium nucleus. What's a helium nucleus? Well, helium is element number two. It has two protons and two neutrons. You can write it like this, He. It's got two protons, so it has a charge of two. But if it has two protons and two neutrons, what's the total mass that it has? Four. And does, does anyone remember we gave that particle a special name? Do you remember? We gave it a couple of days ago. It was something else. It's an alpha particle. So the other name, also known as alpha particle. The symbol for alpha was a little fish. Mass of four, charge of two. Alpha particles, we can produce those. They are a form of radiation. They're reasonably harmless. They won't go through you. Uh, don't swallow something that gives off alpha particles, though it can do damage. And I think I told you there was a Russian spy a few years ago who was actually poisoned that way. Thorium, I think, in his coffee cup. I think. I have to go look it up. Uh, if you're bored, Google Russian spy poisoned radioactivity, and you'll find the Wikipedia. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, I believe he was a Russian expatriate who then transferred or defected to Britain. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it also because traditionally uh, among all of the countries when people defect, the rule is you leave them alone because if you kill someone who's defected, then that country is probably going to kill all the people. And it just like it's a free for all. So the whole idea is, OK, we won't touch your guys if you don't touch our guys. And anyways, I'm sure there's going to be some type of repercussions. Watch the news. Uh, third, uh, the fourth kind was electrons. What would be a good letter to use as an abbreviation for an electron? What's the mass of an electron? Nearly what? So close that we say it is zero. What's the charge on an electron? Careful. Negative one. And we gave this a special name a couple of days ago when we looked at radioactivity. We said, if you have a stream of electrons, we also call those what kind of particles? These are beta particles. Symbol for beta was a B with a tail. Mass of zero, charge of negative one. Beta particles can go through you. That can be helpful. 
if you're doing, uh, if, they're, if you're swallowing some kind of radioactive medicine and they're looking for tumors and things like that, it's giving off beta particles and when they put you into either a CT scan or an MRI, it can pick up where the beta particles are coming from and follow it all the way through your body because it can pick up those electrons. Yep. So, barium? Yep. I believe so, yeah. I got to double check that, but I'm pretty sure barium is a source of beta particles. Yep. So, let's split an atom. Suppose we have a great big atom of uranium-235 right there. The mass is 235. It's got 92 protons. How many neutrons does it have? Well, right now, it has 235 minus 92. Right now, oh, how about divided by, Mr. Duke? 235 minus 92. It has 143 neutrons. And suppose using a neutron gun of some type, how do they build that, patience, young grasshoppers? We fire one more neutron into there, hit it dead center. That's enough to tip uranium over and have it become unstable. This is what they did in the first nuclear reactions, Laura. They fired one more, and so now you'll notice in our reaction here, what's the new mass of uranium? Instead of 235, what's its new mass? Has it picked up an extra proton at all? No, it picked up an extra neutron. Ty, that's just enough to send it over the edge. It'll split. It'll split into, what's KR? If you have your, oh, by the way, you might want your pink sheet out or someone at your table? Krypton. krypton. Krypton, yes, you thought Superman. No, it's not a made up, actual, it, there's actually an element called Krypton, not Kryptonite, but Krypton. And barium. Uh, I wrote here, can you spot the typo? There is a typo here. Oh, you get a couple of more things, by the way. You get it splitting into Krypton, barium, and Brady, what else? Three neutrons go shooting off. And if you're lucky, if you're lucky, those will hit more uranium, causing that uranium to split and send off three more neutrons. And if you're lucky, those will hit, and th that's what you call a nuclear chain reaction. Oh, and you also get a tiny bit of energy. Now, there is a typo. How much mass do we have before the element splits? 236. How much does krypton weigh? 92. How much do three neutrons weigh? How much does one neutron weigh? One. How much do three neutrons weigh? Okay, if I go 236 minus 92 minus three neutrons, I should have 141 mass left. Can you cross out the 121 on barium? Make it 141. The mass doesn't work. Okay. Turn the page. I'll leave my diagram still up here. Here's how we would write this nuclear reaction as an equation. What was the new symbol that I just gave you for a neutron? N, mass of one, charge of zero. Plus, and then we have uranium-235, uranium-92. So we combine those in a nuclear reaction, Emily. And for a split second, nothing happens. We end up with uranium-236 with a mass of 92. Yeah, we've turned the page, right? I'm keeping the diagram so you guys can see the diagram up there still, yes? Now, that uranium-236 is not happy. It's going to split up. This is, what's going, this is what went on in the first atom bomb, the one with the big mushroom cloud. This is what was going on. You're going to end up with what? Krypton with a mass of 96 and 36 protons plus barium with, we fixed the mass of 141 and 56 protons, plus, what are those right there? You know what, I'm gonna go like this. Here's a neutron, 
three of those. Oops, I got the I got the zero and one mixed up. Sorry, hang on. The one goes on the top. One mass, zero charge. Plus energy. Um, at the beginning. How much mass do I have, grand total? 236. Midway through, how much mass do I have? 236. How much mass do I have? Well, if I go at the end, 96 plus 141 plus 3. Is that right, Mr. Duick? What am I doing here? Oh, what's supposed to be 92? That there? 92, 92 plus 141 plus 3, I can't even write, read my own writing, 236. My mass is balanced. Yes? Okay, I've lied. It is technically. It is technically. Hayden, what's happened here, this little bit of energy that you see, a very, 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 very small amount of energy, a small amount, sorry, a small amount of mass, a small amount of matter turned into energy. This here is this. You may have seen that equation before. It's probably the most famous equation out there, E equals mc squared. It's what Einstein came up with in about 1910, and it's what led to about 30 years later them saying, hey, we can take matter and convert it into energy, and we're going to get a lot of energy. It's a very tiny amount of matter. How much, Alon? So much that you actually, it's not even one whole mass, which is why things are still balanced in my equation. But Josh, I'm a nerd. I got to tell you, technically, we lost a tiny microscopic bit of mass to energy. But that's what it looks like as an equation. So here are some important features of the fission reaction for uranium-235. By the way, fission means to split. When you see a big jagged ditch in the ground, you can call it a fissure, splitting the ground. When something is a fissure, it splits. This is what's going on in many nuclear reactors right now. If you ever wondered what's the big deal with uranium, why do we want uranium, it's because of this. There's a fair bit of it. Canada has lots of it. We're one of the major exporters of uranium, especially up north. In a neutron bombardment, a nucleus of uranium is struck by a neutron. Two smaller nuclei are produced, krypton-92 and barium-146. Fission produces up to five neutrons. You may get one, you may get two, you may get three, you may get four, you may get five. Three is the most common, which is why I gave you that one in this equation here. A large amount of energy is released. Actually, it's a small amount, but if you do this several trillion times, a large amount of energy is released. The products are radioactive, uh, though it cannot be seen in the equation. The masses of all the products are slightly less than the masses of both reactants. This represents a tiny amount of matter turning into a huge amount of energy. Um, you can't tell that the products are radioactive, but do you want to go walking into a nuclear reactor after they shut it off? I think you guys have watched enough TV and seen enough science programs to say, gotcha. Here's what's going on. Put your pencils down, look up. Keep going. So, it says, find the indicated daughter nucleus for each of the following. You need your periodic table here? You need your pink sheet? Oh, turn the page if you haven't already. Okay. So, if we start out with one neutron and uranium-235, and we end up with mystery product and cesium-143 and three neutrons and energy. First of all, how much mass must this mystery product have? How much mass were we starting out with? 236. How much mass do we have here? 
Okay, 143 and three more. So it looks like I'm going to need 236, take away 143, take away three. The mystery mass is how much? 90. Uh, how many protons, what charge did we start out with? Grand total. How much, Leah? What's the total charge? 92 plus zero in your head. What must my charge be afterwards? Still, 92. How much do I have there? How much do I have there? You know what, then? I need to go 92 minus 55. I have 37 protons left over. And the number of protons tells me what element we are. What is element number 37? Sorry? Rubidium or rubium? Are you? Are you? Is that what it is? RB. RB. There you go. Okay. So how we got that? Yeah? Good. Try doing B and C on your own. Take about two minutes and we'll go over it in just a second. I'm going to freeze the screen. Let's see if we get it. So Canada makes a very good nuclear reactor. It doesn't run on uranium. It runs on thorium, which is another radioactive element. And it uses a slightly different uh, radioactive reaction. Uh, if you've got your textbooks, turn to page 319. Take a look at the can-do Canada reactor. If you don't have a textbook, see if there's one at your table that you can share with. Hast thou a textbook, my angel? Swap me, what do you got? Anybody else want to have a textbook? 319, page 319? Page 319. Of course, now I gave away my textbook. That was silly. Page 319. I got it here, I believe. Where are we? Oh, way too far, Mr. Duick. Page 319. 321, back two pages, Mr. Duick. Here we go. Here's the can-do reactor. It's a very nice one. Uh, it uses uh, slightly different, so this is the uh, uranium equation right there. The can-do reactor uses a slightly different one. It uses what it stands for Canadian deuterium uranium reactor. So deuterium is a type of hydrogen one that is twice as heavy because it has both a proton and a neutron. It's considered a very good reactor for a couple of reasons. First of all, most of the fail safes don't require electricity, which means if you lose power, you don't need a diesel generator that might get flooded to use it. Okay? Fact. I think I have a video of the can-do reactor. I'll show you that a bit later. Leave that open. Back to our notes. Why is nuclear power part of our future? I just showed you a video about an earthquake that caused a nuclear reactor to go back. Why are we still trying to pursue nuclear power? It's because of one equation, E equals mc squared, where m equals mass And C is the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So I've had enough. We're going to nuke someone. Who came in late to my class about five minutes into class Hey, you, you, let's nuke Hayden. All righty, this is your lucky day, my friend. We're going to nuke you. Okay? I need your mass in kilograms. Can you stand on it, please? And the black circle is kilograms, so stand on it. What is your mass in kilos? 71, let's do 70. Nice round number. Okay? If we could nuke Hayden, if we could take all of the matter, all of the atoms, all of the matter that's contained in Hayden, and convert that to energy. 
how much would there be? So what, what do we say your mass was? 70 kilograms? The amount of energy we would get is 70 times 3 times 10 to the 8th squared. Now, if you don't have your calculator here, I have mine here. 70 times 3 times 10 to the 8th power squared. It's giving me an answer in scientific notation because it can't fit that on my screen. This is 6.3 times 10 to the 18, which is a 6, a 3, and then add 17, 17, 17 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 17 zeros. And then if I start commaing them in groups of three, I can tell you how big this number is. So let's see. That's millions, billions, trillions. What comes after trillions? Quadrillions. What comes after quadrillions? What's the prefix for five? Also begins with a Q. Quintillion. As it turns out, inside Hayden, if we nuke him, there is 6.3 quintillion joules of energy. How many 60 watt light bulbs would that power? If I divide that by 60, we could power one zero, five, and 15 zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Uh, 105 quadrillion light bulbs. Ty, that's a lot. It's a lot. It's an awful lot. This is why Hayden, despite the dangers, we're really, really interested in harnessing the power enclosed in an atom. Who? Pardon me? Well, we need atoms that are slightly unstable, so we pick ones from lower on the periodic table. The easiest, the most common one is uranium, and that we can use that firing a neutron into it, splitting it up. Some of the matter gets changed to energy, not all of it, but it's enough to power an awful lot. The one that we just did with you is if we could somehow take all of your matter and change it into energy. But it's a staggering amount. Turn the page. Nearly done. So Amy, what's the downside of nuclear fission, of splitting the atom? You get radioactive waste. And the radioactive waste has half-lives of millions of years. So all of our nuclear reactors, those control rods, once they're spent, once they've burned out, they're still radioactive. We've got to do something with them. We bury them. We store them. They're stored in caves all over North America. They're buried underground in North America in these huge lead-lined containers. And Jessica, we've decided that we'll keep watch over them for the next million years or so. We have to. We have to, because if terrorists got them, now you have some radioactive stuff, you throw that in somebody's groundwater, and you can poison a whole city. There's got to be a better solution. There is, and it's the opposite of nuclear fission. Fission is when you split an atom. The next one, B, fusion, is when you cause two at smaller atoms to join together to become one bigger atom. So, two smaller nuclei join to form one larger nucleus. We're yep. And we know it's doable because we see it all the time. This is what's going on in the sun. All that sun's energy, all that sunlight, all that heat, that's coming from the fact that the sun is a huge nuclear fusion furnace. All stars are. Deep inside the sun, hydrogen atoms are being fused 
into helium atoms. In fact, the word helium is from the Greek word helios, which means the god of the sun. Oh, and then some of those helium atoms are getting fused into uh, helium plus helium, two plus two, beryllium. And some of those are getting fused into bigger and bigger atoms. So far, we can't make this happen on Earth without using more energy than we can put in. We can do it. But if we get 100 joules of energy out, Emily, put it away, please. If we get 100 joules of, Emily, uh, uh, of, Emily, of energy out, we have probably had to put 1,000 joules in. But if we can get this to work, Jen, it'd be awesome. And this is probably going to happen in your lifetimes. Why? No nuclear waste. Oh, and hydrogen and helium, we got lots of. What's the formula for water? We can get it from water. We can take ocean seawater, split off the oxygen. We got hydrogen. If we can get that to fuse and give off energy, if we can accomplish that in the lab, and they're very, 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 very close. So it's very desirable. No. Nuclear waste. Here's the equation for the sun. A hydrogen atom with one proton and one nucleus, that's why it has a mass of two. And another hydrogen atom with one proton and two neutrons, sorry, I said nucleus, two neutrons, that's why it's got a mass of three. The sun squeezes them together under tremendous pressure and you get a helium atom, a neutron, and sunlight, heat, energy. That's what's going on. Put your pencils down, look up. So your homework, and you can have also Wednesday to work on this, but you can start working your way through what we've looked at here. So there's some vocabulary, terminology. These might be some words that I might ask you on your upcoming test. Then it says, give a description, f complete the following table. I think you can probably get this right from your notes, this lovely summary table that was on the very last page of your notes. See if you can figure out which one of these are fusion or fission. Remember, fusion, you're splitting, sorry, fusion, you're combining two atoms. Fission, you're splitting up two atoms. And then see if you can figure out these chemical reaction, nuclear reaction equations based on keeping all the top row balanced, all the bottom row balanced, and then try and figure out what the missing element number is based on its atomic number. And then there's a little practice quiz. I attach the answers, so you can work on this for the remaining five minutes, and you'll also get time on Wednesday to work on this, I think. Okay.